This is my 2000 Honda Insight. Uh, this has been my daily driver for over seven years now. And I'm gonna show you how to avoid replacing that expensive hybrid battery and keep it alive indefinitely. First, I'm gonna talk a little bit about this car and then we'll get into how you can renew your battery without spending a ton of money. This was the first hybrid on the market. It's an all aluminum chassis that was built in the same factory as the NSX. One of the reasons I bought this was because it won't rust out. It weighs only 1,800 pounds. It has a three cylinder with VTEC, yo, and pancake motor that's in between the engine and the transmission. It's a five speed manual. It shares the steering wheel with an S2000. It's got really bolstered seats. This thing is basically like a CRX, not an SI CRX, but a normal CRX. It's fun to drive. Because this is a first gen hybrid, this had nickel metal hydride batteries. So it does have some issues. I'm gonna show you guys how you can drive one of these things and most importantly, not replace that expensive hybrid battery. Instead, I'm gonna show you how to keep that battery alive basically indefinitely using a grid charger and about $3 in materials, so. All right, so the secret is getting a grid charger. These are like 200 to $400. They basically trickle charge your battery and get them all balanced. What goes on with these things is they have a bunch of little batteries and they have a battery controller, which is like a battery ECU and they get what people call out of balance. Just because this is a first generation hybrid, they didn't have it totally down yet. When one battery gets completely full of power, it'll say, hey, I'm full, I don't need any more power, and it'll cut power, but it won't keep charging all the other sticks, which might need more power. And on the other end, when one battery is completely low and says, I'm out, I don't have any more power, um, the other sticks might have more power in them, but you can't use it. So over time, both ends of the spectrum just get smaller and smaller and smaller until your usability of the battery is just not very good. You'll get a IMA code, uh, it just doesn't work. So what you wanna do is you wanna get a grid charger, you wire that up to the battery. I'm not gonna go into that here. It's not hard to do, it took me about 45 minutes. Then you wanna plug this in for over 24 hours. Now I believe this is a 177 volt battery or something like that. This thing always reads high. If I do a tap voltage at the battery pack, it'll be a lot lower. So this is what the, this is outputting. Um, but this is about what this reads when it's completely full. Um, it, you can see that it's not going up at all. It's staying stationary. So this is very much topped off. And what we're gonna do on this old battery is we're gonna flatten it all the way this way, then we're gonna grid charge it, and then we're gonna flatten it, and then we're gonna grid charge it. We're gonna do that three times. And the reason we're doing that is these batteries have a memory, so to speak. So you, what you wanna do is really exercise the low end and the high end. And this will basically renew the battery enough that this will be perfectly drivable for a few months. And then once a month or so, you'll have to plug this in overnight. Uh, maybe on a, on a weekend, leave it in a little bit longer. So far, I've had this thing seven years. I bought it with 180,000 miles and a completely not working battery. Now I have 289,000 miles. It's still working. And generally, yeah, I gotta do this deep discharge about once a year. I do it in the summer because hey, it's nice out. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So in the wiring harness for the grid charger, what I wired in was an extension cord. And I'll show you why. This, if you were to plug something in here, this is the full voltage of that battery. So that could kill you. But this is my super high-tech battery discharger. It's a piece of scrap wood, a $3 ceramic bulb holder with an outlet, which is important, and a incandescent floodlight. I took the other half of the extension cord and wired it to the terminals of this light fixture. So this is this, it, you basically use one extension cord. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut power to the grid charger, and then I'm going to flatten this battery just by plugging this in. So boom, there's the light, it's super bright. This is gonna need to be plugged in like this, just wasting this energy probably overnight. I'm sure when I'm going to sleep tonight, there's gonna be light shooting up the side of the house, but that's fine. Um, tomorrow morning, I'm gonna check the voltage by plugging a multimeter into this little outlet here, and that's gonna tell me where the battery's at. So let's let this waste energy. I'll be back tomorrow morning and we'll uh, get back to it. All right, it's uh, the next day at noon. So this has been, this, this light bulb discharger has been plugged in for, I don't know, quite a while. So let's see how it's doing. 
All right, so as you can see, the light bulb is completely off. So what I'm gonna show you guys now is um, called voltage bounce back, I think. So what you wanna do is take a meter, put it on voltage, and then just jam the two leads in here. So you can see I have, it looks like five volts. See how it's climbing? That's because the voltage bounces back. Now, some people are worried about um, a cell reversal. I, I mean, I've done this for years and I haven't had any issues. So, I mean, that's just uh, anecdotal evidence, but I'm not too worried about it because um, this battery was pretty toast when I bought it and I've been doing this for a while now and it doesn't seem to hurt it. So yeah, I'm gonna grid charge this again, again for 24 hours, and then I'm gonna deep discharge this again. So yeah, you can see it climbing 22, 24. So we're gonna let this get all the way up until it stops moving and then run it another six to 12 hours. You could really be anal about this and check it every few hours, but I, I, I don't think these things are that sensitive. Maybe they are, but this has been working for me. So I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing. This thing hasn't moved in quite a while, so what I'm going to do is again just do a deep discharge. And all I'm going to do is plug in this lamp. And I'm going to set this to DC. You can see it's reading 170, not 210 like this was saying. It's staying pretty strong at 170, 169.9. Yeah, we'll go down. Check on it tomorrow morning. All right, so we're at less than a volt now. That's probably good. We're still gonna get voltage bounce back. You can see that as soon as I unscrew it, it just starts rising again. But this has been draining for a while. I think it's time to grid charge it. Um, again, I don't feel that this is personally a very precise process. All right, we'll let this run a while. You can see the voltage is climbing pretty quickly. All right, this is the next morning. This has been plugged in overnight. It's reading 215 or so. Um, check the tap voltage in a minute here. I'm gonna unplug the grid charger. Switch this to DC again. It's at 175 volts. I think it's supposed to be right around 170. Um, as packs age, the voltage will go up or something like that. I'm not really sure why. Now we're gonna do one last deep discharge cycle. So I'll be plugging this in probably later tonight, probably right before I go to sleep. It's about 10 a.m. right now, so I figure about 12 hours with this on here should knock the pack down pretty significantly. Okay, so I just disconnected the grid charger. Now I've got to reset the IMA system. So what I do to reset the IMA system, there's a bunch of ways you can do this, but I just open this fuse box and third from the left, this pink one that says 30, I just pull that out and wait a few seconds. If you want to learn how to do the brakes, I did a video of this car and put some slotted rotors in here because it's, you know, really fast. It's not. Okay, so because I just reset the IMA, it's gonna to need to sit here a second while it recals. So you can see my IMA light is now out and it's charging the IMA system a little bit, but this bar is completely empty. That's good. That just means it's trying to figure out the state of charge of the battery. All right, auto stop is working. We're just gonna do a quick acceleration test. Good. 
All right, because the battery is working pretty well, I'm gonna go chuck it through some twisties. Because this car is pretty fun to drive. All right, so that about covers the uh, deep discharging process. Um, hope you guys get some use out of this. Uh, I know a lot of people spend thousands of dollars on new packs, but really you don't have to. You can just do this once a year and then you don't need to spend thousands of dollars. So I would just do this. Anyway, thanks for watching.